In the upcoming X-Men film, Wolverine travels back in time to team up with younger versions of Professor Xavier and Magneto. That's fine for the X-Men, the Doctor, and Marty McFly, but you could never travel through time. That's just something in comic books and movies. Or is it? I'm Rusty Ward, and I always wanted to travel back in time and tell my younger self that everything's going to be okay, because you grow up to be awesome. But unfortunately, I can't because time is fixed, right? Wrong. It turns out time isn't fixed at all. Einstein's theory of relativity showed us that time can be experienced differently. The faster you travel, the slower you experience time. This was proven in 1971 using atomic clocks. Atomic clocks are incredibly accurate clocks that measure time in nanoseconds. A number of these clocks were synchronized. Then some were put on jetliners while others were kept on the ground. The jetliners flew around the world and then after they landed they were compared with the clocks on the ground. The times they showed were different. The difference was only a matter of nanoseconds, but it proved Einstein's theory. The closer you get to traveling at the speed of light, the slower time moves. This means that time travel to the future is possible. If you were to board a spaceship traveling at 99.999% the speed of light, and flew for one year, then returned to Earth, you would find that the people on Earth experienced 233 years, while you had only aged one year. To go back in time, you simply have to travel faster than light. Then time starts moving backward. The problem with that is nothing surpasses light speed. It's the cosmic speed limit. So theoretical physicists had to come up with another solution. They believe that time travel to the past could be possible using an Einstein-Rosen bridge, which also goes by the name wormhole. A wormhole is a particular type of distortion in space-time. Space is regularly distorted by gravity. The gravitational fields of planets and stars distort or bend space the same way a bowling ball would bend a sheet if it was placed on top of a mattress. A wormhole is when two of these distortions meet. The easiest way to understand this is to imagine space as a two-dimensional plane. Here are two points, and right now the only way to get from one point to the other is to travel the distance in between them on the plane. But if a large amount of energy caused disruptions and brought these two points together, they would form a wormhole. Then you could travel through the wormhole to get from one point to the other and not have to travel the space in between them. And since space and time are interconnected as space-time, a wormhole could theoretically connect not only two different points in space, but also two different points in time. Wormholes are a theoretical construct. No one's ever seen one, but it's believed they exist. Stephen Hawking says that wormholes are opening and closing all around us. They're just too small to see. They occur on a subatomic level in what's called the quantum foam. Using the theory of relativity, a theoretical physicist named Kip Thorne at Caltech showed that an advanced society should be able to grab a wormhole that connects two points in space a short distance apart. The two mouths of the wormhole could be enlarged to fit a human being and then stabilized using electrical charges. Before I continue, it may help if I employ some high-tech visual aids. The year is 2050. Bob the physicist has just discovered a way to enlarge and stabilize wormholes. The wormhole has two mouths, portal A and portal Z. The space inside the wormhole is one meter. So no matter how far apart the portals are, whether it's two centimeters or 10 kilometers, when Bob goes in one side of the portal, he only has to walk one meter before traveling out the other side. Bob the physicist calls Bill the space pilot. Bill has a spaceship that can travel at 99.999% the speed of light. Bob says, hey Bill, I want you to take portal Z and travel into space at top speeds. Bill says, where do you want me to go? Bob says, I don't care as long as you're traveling at close to light speeds. Bill says, hey, Moving that fast for that amount of time, that's gonna take a lot of energy, cost a lot of money. I went half up front. 
Bob says, you know I'm good for it. Bill says, I don't do business like that. Bob says, all right, here's 10,000 space bucks. Come back to Earth in three months. Bill takes off with Portal Z. So Bill travels in his spaceship for six weeks, and then he hears a sound on the other side of the portal. Who is it? It's Bob saying, hey, Bill, it's been six weeks. Come on back to Earth, so it'll be a total of three months. And Bill says, don't tell me how to do my job. I'm on my way back. Bill lands on Earth, runs into Bob, who now has a long white beard and is having trouble getting around. Bob tells Bill it's the year 3000. 50 years has passed on Earth while you experienced three months. Bill says, yeah, yeah, that's great. You got my money. Bob says, you can go on through Portal Z and get your money. So Bob goes through Portal Z, walks one meter, comes out Portal A, and who does he see at the end of Portal A but young Bob. Young Bob says, you're back in 2050. Bill says, save it, nerd, give me my money. So now Bill and Bob can travel through these portals just as anybody else in these two time eras can and go back and forth between 2050 and 3000. The downside of this method of time travel is that it doesn't allow for time travel earlier than any point before the creation of the first time machine. Any time travel after 2050 is fair game for time tourists, but that's as far as they can go. Though this is a drawback, it does provide us with an explanation to those who claim that time travel has been proven impossible by the mere fact that we haven't yet met any time travelers. So if anyone from the future is watching this and you have access to a spaceship that can travel at near light speeds, I want to say happy time traveling. But remember, you don't want to cause a paradox. In order to keep your timeline paradox free, there's three simple rules you can follow. Number one, don't shoot your grandfather. Number two, don't sleep with your grandmother. And number three, never bring your highly evolved uber intelligent super ape back into the past with you. I want to thank audible.com for sponsoring this episode. It's partnerships like this that will allow me to continue this series. You can go to audible.com slash rusty right now and download a free audiobook just like I did. Then I'll get credit for it and Audible might want to help me out with future episodes. They have over 150,000 titles including hard science, science fiction, fantasy, whatever genre you're interested in. I just downloaded Stephen Hawking's A Briefer History of Time. It's a 2005 update to his 1988 book A Brief History of Time. It's been on my must read list forever but I've never gotten around to reading it. Now I can listen to it when I'm tinkering with my plasma field generator. You know, hobby stuff. So head on over to audible.com slash rusty and if this is your first time here, click subscribe and check out my playlist of real X-Men superpowers. And of course, let me know what superpower you want.